So this is lesson 6.2 volumes using disc and washer methods. Um, this is going to be a two part uh, video series. So I'm going to do the disc method in part one and then come back for part two in the next video to see the washer method. All right. So this is a really cool lesson. We're going to work in 3D today. Um, we're going to take some of the same functions we've been looking at, but instead of finding the area underneath their curves, we're going to be rotating these functions. Um, and creating 3D shapes and then calculating the volume of these shapes. Um, it really helps to have uh, a little animation here when we're trying to visualize this. So I'm going to bring up my Desmos 3D graph here and look at the function that is, so I'm circling it here with my mouse. We're going to look at this function, f of x equals 0.2x squared. So it's just like a parabola um, from zero to x equals four. So this kind of almost triangular shape, we're gonna imagine this shape being rotated around the x axis, and then we're gonna calculate the volume of that shape. Okay, so let's look at the um, animation. Okay, so actually I have to change the graph here. All right, so here is the parabola that we were looking at, right? We're looking um, at x values from 0 to 4. It doesn't really matter in this. In This is more for the visual. Um, and see all of these points on the graph. Those are going to be rotated around the x-axis. So let's look at this a little bit more in 3D here. Okay, so here's the x-axis that I'm pointing at with my mouse. Okay, all of those points are going to be rotated around. So let's see how that would look. Okay, so we're going to rotate around Okay, and you see that 3D shape that's being created? I can actually even turn on the surface there and watch how these points get rotated around and see this 3D shape that's being created it almost looks like kind of like a cone. So we're gonna be calculating the volume of that shape. Now, remember back to when we first learned about integrals and we were talking about how we might estimate the area under a curve, right? We talked about how we'd split that area into um, many different rectangles and then add up the areas of all those rectangles. This time, we're gonna split up this area. Do you see these circles being created, right? So instead of imagining the area as a bunch of rectangles, this time we're gonna imagine the volume as a bunch of circles. And we're gonna add up the areas of all of those circles or the volumes of all of those circles. And then we'll get the volume of the entire 3D shape. Um, so let me show you what those disks, we're gonna call them disks, uh, will look like. So I'm gonna turn off the surface here and I'm gonna turn on the disks that get created, okay? So as I rotate this around, you can see all of those disks. Right? And so if we added up the volumes of all of those disks, we get a pretty good estimation of what the volume would be. And then we can imagine those disks being sort of infinitely small. And that's where our integral, or infinitely thin, I guess you could say. And that's where our integral will come in. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to add up all of those disks. Let me just open up my parameters section here. Um, starting from zero, right? And then all the way to x equals four. And that's where we're going to get our volume. Okay, so let's see how the how we would do that um, using an integral. Okay, so back to our notes here. We can see some of those same visuals in the pictures that you have in your notes. Okay, um, let's talk about the area of just one single disk first. Okay, so um, the area of any circle, right, is pi times radius squared. Now in this example, each disc is gonna have a different radius because they're all different sizes, but the radius is this length here that I'm labeling with my pen, right? And that happens to be the Y value of the curve, right? So whatever disc we're talking about there, the, the radius of that particular disc will be whatever the Y value is at that point on the, on the curve. Um, and for this particular function, the y value is always equal to 0 0.2 times x squared. Okay, so a little formula for the area of one disk will be pi times y squared, which will be pi times, for this curve, 0 0.2 x squared squared. Okay, and now if I wanted to add up the volumes of all of those disks, right, um, we would do the integral. 
to a volume would equal the integral from 0 to 4, because we're adding up 0 is where the disks start and 4 is where they end, right? Um, and we're going to add up all of these disks. So it's going to be the area will be um, 0 0.2 x squared all squared. So that's the area of each like face. And then we add the dx here because that is like the little height or the width of each of these disks. So the volume of each disk will be pi times radius squared dx, right? And we'll add up all of those to get our total volume. And that's how we get the volume of this shape that's being um, created. Okay, so let's practice doing this a couple of times. Um, here is another example. This time we have a different function, but same idea. It's going to be rotated um, around the x-axis. I can show you quickly um, in my animation what that would look like, right? So this time we have square root of x. So it just changes the shape a little bit, right? Um, and if I want to take off the disks here, and put on the surface, okay, display the surface, right? Um, this is what this shape will look like as it's being created and rotated around the x-axis, and you see all those circles, right? And we're gonna add up the volumes of each one of those disks that's created there, okay? So I'm gonna go back to here, right? And so here's a visual on our page here. Um, it's kind of hard to draw a 3D image on a 2D flat piece of paper, but we kind of did our best. Um, and we see one of the disks, right? It's really helpful to draw one disk for yourself so you can label the radius. So remember that the width of this disk, we're imagining it to be like infinitely thin, so we're gonna call that dx, okay? And then the radius is this distance here, okay? So the radius is the y-coordinate. Um, wherever that happens to be for that disk. So each disk is going to have a different radius. It'll depend on where along the x-axis it is, right? Um, so let's just set up our... So the radius is the y-coordinate, which equals root x for this particular curve. And the area of one disk will be pi times radius squared so for this disk, it'll be pi times root x squared, and we can simplify that to make the integration easier. It'll be pi times x. And the bounds of the integral we're gonna add up these disks from zero all the way, it's not written on this one, but from zero all the way to one. Okay. Uh, so it's gonna be from x equals zero to x equals 1 that we're adding up all of these disks and then let's finally write the expression for the integral and solve it okay so the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x dx okay um, and we can take out the pi because it's a constant and take the antiderivative bump the power up divide by the power evaluate from 1 to 0, and we get half pi over 2. Okay. Um, always leave your answers as exact um, unless told otherwise, so we're just going to leave it as that. All right, so that's the exact volume of that shape that's being created. Okay. Um, we don't just, we can rotate, so here we rotate it around the x-axis, we can rotate around different lines um, and get different shapes. So we are going to now take a um, look at what happens when we rotate our shapes around the y-axis, okay? So rotating around a vertical line instead, right? So let's look at the picture here. I've got um, a shape here being rotated around the y-axis. This time we are going to have a function that's written in terms of y. So it's going to be sine y plus root y as our example here. And we're rotating that around and it kind of creates this kind of vase looking shape. Um, and then we get this here. So this time our, our radius of each disk is gonna be the X coordinate, right? Which in this example, X is equal to sine Y plus root Y. So each one is gonna have a different radius and wherever it happens to be along the curve, 
um, that will determine its radius. So it'll be sine y plus root y. Um, and we are going to add all of these up from y equals 0 all the way to y equals 4. So we're going to be integrating in y here along the y-axis in the y direction. Okay. So the area of each disk is going to be pi times radius squared, which will be for this particular example, sine y plus root y all squared. Okay. So the volume, we're not going to solve this one, we're just going to set it up. It's going to be the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 4. Those are the bounds. Um, pi times radius squared dy. So the width of each of these disks, I'm going to just kind of label it here. We imagine that they are infinitely thin, um, and so they all have a height or a width of dy. Okay, so the volume is what you get when you add up the volumes of all of those infinitely thin disks. Okay, let's do a practice one. So here's an example here. So we'll notice that um, all of these will be um, functions that are given in terms of y, or if they're not, we're going to have to like turn them around so that they are. Okay, so this is the function we're dealing with here. It's x equals cube root of y. Okay, um, and so I'm going to draw one of the disks on the paper here. It's helpful to do this, I find. I'm also going to kind of sketch out what this might look like when we rotate it around the y-axis sometimes it's so this kind of creates this like tall skinny sort of bowl like shape and one of the discs will look something like this okay and we have to imagine them being infinitely thin so the, this is dy here and then the radius is whatever the x-coordinate is at that particular point. Um, and the x-coordinate for our, this graph is cube root of y. Okay, um, So the area of one disk would be pi times cube root of y squared, which we can write that a little bit nicer for our integration purposes. It's going to be pi times y to the power of 2 thirds. Okay. The bounds of my integral are from, I'm integrating in y here, so I'm looking at y values. I'm going from y equals 0 to y equals 8, and my volume will be from y equals 0 to y equals 8, all of those disks added together. So I'm going to take the antiderivative here and then solve it. So it's the antiderivative of y to the power of two thirds is y to the it is pi times um, three over five times y to the power of five over three, and we're evaluating from eight to zero. And if you plug in y equals eight into that power, you get ninety six over five pi. So remember that we are keeping exact values. Um, for this. Okay, good. So that's how to do this in the y direction. Um, let's have a look at one more example here where the axis that I'm rotating around is not one of the axes. So we're going to go back in this example to rotating around a horizontal line. So we're going to be integrating an x here. And let's just have a look at what we're given. Okay, so it says find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region of this curve y equals x squared, so that's the graph you see, um, y equals negative 3 and x equals 2 and x equals 3, so the shaded region there that we've drawn, okay, so it's kind of hard to see these values, but this is 2 and this is 3, okay, and then this line is at negative 3, okay, and we're rotating it around that dashed line there at y equals negative 3, okay, so I'm going to kind of try and draw, we're going to get sort of this um, kind of cone shape, but like that has a hole in the bottom when we rotate it. Okay, so it's, yeah, something like this. Okay, um, and then it's helpful to draw one disc somewhere. Okay, so I'll just kind of draw it right here. And the radius of this disk is longer than what the y-coordinate 
would be here. So the y coordinate is this distance here. And then there's this extra three units added on to the radius um, compared to if we would have rotated around like the x-axis, for example. So the radius is actually the y coordinate plus an extra three. Um, so the radius here, which is this distance, okay, is y plus three. So for this graph, the y coordinate, depending on where you are along the curve, is x squared. Okay, so the area of one disk is going to be pi times x squared plus three, all squared. Okay, and then um, the bounds of my integral. I'm only going from x equals 2 to x equals 3 here, okay? And then the volume is the integral from 2 to 3 of all of these disks added together, x squared plus 3 squared dx, okay? Again, the 3 comes because you are, oh, my highlighter's not showing up great there. There we go. You're adding an extra 3 to the y coordinate to get that radius, right? Because you're rotating around something that's below the x-axis, so it's gonna extend the radius to be longer than it would have been if you just rotated around the x-axis. Okay, now um, to solve this integral, I'm not gonna like go through all the steps because that's more of a question from the previous unit, but if you wanna pause here and just practice your integration, you can. Um, for this integral, you have to expand that bracket um, to get x to the power of 4 plus 6x squared plus 9. And if you evaluate that, I'll show the antiderivative here. Okay, it's 1 fifth x to the power of 5 plus 2x to the power of 3 plus 9x, evaluated between 3 and 2. And what you end up getting if you do all of that is 446 pi over five. That's your final volume there, okay? Um, yeah, so that's the end of part one of this lesson, and then part two is gonna show what happens um, when you rotate the area between two curves, um, and you get this hole in the middle of your shape.